welcome to everybody in this uh, webinar, which is a part of a series of webinars we are organizing as a follow-up to our peer learning visits in sharing cities. You m might have participated already in our previous uh, webinar, a public one, which we have organized uh, around replication and uh, the peer learning visit in Lisbon. That one has focused mainly on mobility and building retrofitting. And uh, if you would like to see it again, you can, of course, uh, visit our website. And it's very easy to find that webinar. So this webinar is uh, a follow-up of a visit we have done in Greenwich with uh, three fellow cities, Burgas, Bordeaux, and Warsaw. Uh, Greenwich is a lighthouse city. I mean the Royal Borough of Greenwich, of London, obviously. And there have been many um, activities and measures we had to visit and discuss with the host city. So we won't be able to cover everything and all measures of uh, sharing cities. But uh, we have invited a uh, fellow city to tell you about what, what they, they found, found the most, the most interesting. interesting. And, and I will, I will give the floor, the floor in a few seconds, seconds to Chris, Chris Colinet from, Bordeaux, from Bordeaux, who will mainly, who will mainly highlight, highlight those measures, those, measures, those uh, areas of interest on smart cities that uh, he found most relevant. And then uh, Rick Curtis, who is um, actually working on um, SEMS, the Smart Energy Management System, uh, for the program. So he's also coordinating activities of the Lighthouse Cities on this area, and he will give you an overview of what are the latest developments. And we picked another topic, the smart lamppost, so uh, street lighting as an interesting topic. We had also a workshop with the fellow cities on this. So it will give you a little bit of insight to what to think of when you develop smart, uh, smart lighting or street lighting in a smart way in your cities. Um, the purpose of the webinar is obviously because we, we don't have much time, is just to give you very brief insights to what's happening in this peer learning visit. But we are going to have uh, an opportunity uh, to let you ask questions, and also we would be happy to hear your experience. So we, I really encourage you to write in the chat your questions. I hope everybody can hear me, because I, I was uh, warned that maybe there is a technical issue, but OK. Um, so uh, I would like just to, to ensure that you are aware of it, uh, because I know that many cities are participating in this webinar, that we are going to have more and more opportunities in this second year. For example, peer learning events. There will be many um, other events which we will be organizing also uh, as EuroCities. The Mobility Forum, for example, will take place in Lisbon this year. So you will get a chance to, to see more uh, about the program in life as well. But let's go now to the experience of uh, Christoph and uh, let's hear about what he found most interesting from the experience of Greenwich about this visit. Christoph? Yes. Yeah. You can speak. Yeah. Yes, yeah, thank you, Bernadette. You can hear me? <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. So, um, First of all, I would like to, to say that it's... You can share the screen? Ah, yeah, of course. So people can see your um, presentation. Share my screen. I hope it's a good one. Seems to work. Good. You can see something? Yes. Yeah. No technical issues. <laughs> That's a good point. So, um, uh, first of all, I would like to, to say that it has been a, a hard stuff to prepare a, a PLV report which occurred before Christmas and New Year's festivities. And for this, I would like to warmly thank Vilma and Bernadette, of course, for their, uh, their helpful support to prepare this one. 
and I can't miss this opportunity too to wish to everybody a an happy and, uh, of course, a peaceful new year. Well, um, so this uh, peer learning visit held in, Le in London, sorry, from the 5th to the 8th of uh, December, and more specifically in the Royal Borough of Greenwich, which is one of the 33 boroughs of London in front of uh, Canary Wharf on the, along the same river. So uh, for this report, I picked up two thematics among the different topics which were presented during the visit. And the first of these topics is about e-mobility. And the second one uh, will be about urban sharing platform. So, e-mobility. So I, I pinpointed three, three uh, main uh, uh, um, how can I say three main topics. The first one uh, is the Royal Borough of Greenwich e-mobility scheme, the fifth of December. Then the Transport for London headquarters, the sixth of December, and. Third, the Greenwich Automated Transport Environment, which is uh, a project about automotive vehicles, the 7th of December. Shared immobility in Royal Greenwich. Joel, Joel de Montbré, presented us um, this scheme dealing about four main uh, topics, EV Car Club Pilot, EV charging points, a foot tunnel smart management, and electric bike share scheme. For the two um, the two EV car club pilot and the EV charging points, he explained us that the tender process was uh, in progress. Uh, a tender process for providers was in progress and uh, they were waiting for the results, of course, of, this, uh, of these standards. The third one was about the food tunnel smart management, and uh, he showed us an operational test bed um, uh, about uh, uh, um, uh, a tunnel between uh, the right and the left side of the same, to 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 go by feet for pedestrian and for uh, cyclists too. Um, what we could uh, um, uh, retrieve from this uh, first uh, presentation that, that is uh, the fact that in Bordeaux we already equipped uh, 174 bike stations for 1,080 bikes for sharing. And uh, we can say that we were not so uh, so late uh, uh, comparing to, to the Greenwich experience. So we should also have something to share with uh, Greenwich. That's uh, uh, something which is already uh, uh, started between uh, Joel from uh, Greenwich and uh, Claire from Bordeaux to exchange trick and tips and different uh, uh, useful information about uh, those uh, uh, the different experience of the the, the two the two towns. Um, for example, this morning I heard that uh, the car club experience in Paris um, registered a financial deficit, which will be at the expense of the city. So that would be perhaps interesting to to analyze um, what should be the good business model to to deploy um, e car club EV car club. Pilot. Um, that's it for the first point. For uh, transport for London headquarters, we much appreciated the modeling demonstrators of uh, traffic simulation and uh, how uh, virtual reality could help politicians to make their decision about uh, traffic options. Uh, I could experiment on my on myself that uh, Oxford Street with uh, a virtual reality headset was very uh, a very dangerous uh, street in uh, virtual reality, of course, because I I was almost got an accident with a, a double decker in Oxford Street. So 
that's really interesting, really interesting experience. Um, regarding the London Street Traffic Control Center management, it was an amazing infrastructure, much more important than the one we would ever be able to deploy in a one million inhabitants metropolis like Bordeaux. But the important point, on my point of view, what was the use of uh, we discover of such a tool to control, for example, a low emission zone, like the low emission zone uh, neighborhood in the railroad of Greenwich, or new cyclist habits, or um, the the volume of uh, cyclists in the streets. So. It seems it may help also decision makers to choose new traffic models with a, a, grow, a growth of uh, bike use or EV use, for example. And last but not least, regarding the mobility scheme, the gateway project, gateway like Greenwich Automated Transport Environment. So um, the purpose is to, is to deploy automated shuttles. Um, Sorry, I I have to at the same time. Yeah, the gateway project. So um, the first trial was especially interesting regarding the methodology used to define the path of this vehicle and the human factors, which were which were also uh, um, tested during this trial. That's really innovative for our cities, and the human factor must be widely taken into consideration and into account for uh, such innovative projects. The second theme I would like to, to speak about was uh, Greenwich Community Platform. It's a specific topic we are in Bordeaux really involved. Um, for example, we attend the EIPSCC for Urban Platform and we launched a tender in order to collect the needs of the different departments of the Bordeaux, Bordeaux Metropolis uh, to know what sort of uh, use of uh, their data they should, be, um, they should want to, 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 to get through this uh, new uh, Urban Platform. So this presentation allowed us to, to observe uh, in a real implementation uh, by NEC uh, to observe uh, and to focus on some particular points we would identify as critical for the community like security and like privacy which are also sensible for us in Bordeaux. And I would like to thank Lola and uh, Dejan, the NEC representative, NEC representative for this presentation. Okay, and in order to conclude, I would like to uh, uh, warmly thank Trevor, Heather, Sarah, Joel from uh, Rayborough of Greenwich, and of course Nathan, Rick, Peter, and Sandeep and Shane from the GLA for their kindness, their patience, and their passion shared during those four days in London. So I remain at your disposal for any more questions and. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, thank you very much uh, Christoph. Uh, I think you had a very difficult task to summarize four days in uh, five slides, but uh, I think we got an insight at least to what happened during this uh, peer learning visit. And I would like just to encourage all the cities who are participating in this call to register to the knowledge platform, which we have opened on the website. Uh, and um, indicate their interest in this team, for example, if they want to follow particularly London, for example, on mobility or the urban sharing platform, because we are going to organize um, more open and uh, interactive sessions as well together with you. And now I pass the floor to, to Rick to switch to another topic, which was uh, SAMS, the Smart Energy Management System. Rick, are you with us? Hopefully. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. You can. Super. Thank you, Bernadette. Yes. 
Great. So shall I take the floor? Okay. Thank and you. Well, share your presentation. Thank you. Yes, I will do. Um, I've got that ready here. Let's just. Um, um, fantastic. So bear with me. I'm just sharing my screen. Okay. Just checking. Can everyone see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you, Bernadette. Um, thank you. So, uh, as Bernadette alluded to, um, I'll be running through now um, a bit of an introduction, and it will be a bit of a whistle-stop tour um, around the Sustainable Energy Management System, which is uh, SEMS. Um, this is a uh, part of the Sharing Cities project, um, Work Package 3.2, which sits within the Work Package 3, uh, wider Work Package 3 place um, work stream. Um, so what am I looking to cover today? Um, in the agenda outline, um, we'll be looking at what and why are SEMS. Um, we'll be looking at the common definition um, that we um, have come to across the three uh, lead sharing cities. Um, we'll be looking at the, the slight differences in approaches that um, each city um, is required to take when looking at SEMS. And also just give you a bit of an update on where we've, um, where we've been going so far um, and, and where we're heading. And then really a bit of a discussion to, to open up for the questions around some follower city considerations and, and how we can engage with you uh, best going forward. It's probably worth just saying, obviously we've only got 10 or 15 minutes here um, to give you an introduction. It's, it's quite a complex topic, so um, there are a number of other documents that, that I can share with you, and my contact details will be provided at the end, so please don't hesitate to contact me. So SEMS, what and why? Um, I think it's first best to start with the status quo. Um, so the challenge here is, um, I think a lot of us will be familiar with it, energy management in cities is typically run um, by disparate and isolated digital and hardware solutions. And with that, there's lots of missed energy efficiency and engagement opportunities. So what Sharing Cities is committed to exploring is to develop a sustainable energy management system that can integrate infrastructure, and uh, that could be renewables and EV charging, among a number of things, as we'll see, uh, optimize energy supply, and Rick, provide rich... Uh, yep. Rick, sorry for interrupting. Sure. Uh, I promise I will give you more time, but can you speak a little bit slower, because people are writing in the chat. That okay, of course slow. I can. Apologies for that. <laughs> I will slow right down. Thank you. Um, Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Bernadette. Uh, so, yes, develop a sustainable energy management system. With that is optimizing energy supply and, critically, providing rich data and analytics uh, to stimulate um, end users, essentially. So this could be citizen energy services or wider consumers. So the solution we have come up with and that we are committed to working to um, is uh, quite complicated so don't so you need to jot this down now we'll break this down in the coming slides um, but essentially SEMS captures raw data from a wide range of energy related undertakings uh, including production and consuming devices environment conditions and energy uh, price tariffs um, it uses the latest thinking in advanced process control theory, which we'll be going into in a bit of detail. And with that, it develops and implements sophisticated algorithms based on optimization and predictive control strategies. And we apply that to specific citywide applications. So I appreciate that's a bit of a, bit of a mouthful, but um, we will be looking into that in slightly more detail. Firstly, I think it's important to quickly pause and discuss what's the value of SEMS. Um, why are we doing all this? Um, well, we believe that SEMS has the potential uh, to firstly enable the integration of cities' energy infrastructure, which is a problem we, we, we just spoke about. And secondly, it has the potential to reduce energy consumption by up to 20%. Now, this 20% estimate is based on uh, a number of academic papers and, and, uh, and, and modeling estimations, and, and it really needs testing, um, and, and, and the whole proof of concept needs testing, which is really what this is all about. So we're very much talking about quite an immature um, sort of product um, you know, and, and, and testing something. What are the other implications? Well, clearly, keeping the energy bill down, cost is a big one, and, and finally, minimizing the environmental impact um, with those energy reductions are associated CO2 reductions. So we've had a little look at the high-level uh, context, the what and the why, 
and now I'm just going to take you through a bit of a journey we have um, we, we've gone through at Sharing Cities. Um, so the first thing is really um, about developing and, 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 and testing this concept. Um, again, through the Sharing City demonstrator districts, which I think we're all familiar with, London, Lisbon and Milan. Um, but obviously, we hope this is then going to apply to the follower uh, and scale-up cities in due course. What we'll be looking to do over the next couple of years is capture the learnings, both positive and negative, and really try and explore some of the business models that we could get um, what is essentially a very wide range of, of stakeholders and, and actors, both public and private, and how we can actually uh, create a model that, that enables um, SEMS to be realized. Something else we're doing is we're um, ongoing. We're trying to identify further implementation and partnering opportunities to test and improve. Um, there's potentially a limitless number of use cases um, for SEMS, um, which we will which we're exploring. Um, obviously, we're, we're hoping to test this in multiple locations um, and, once again, looking at the business models. Um, really, it, it, it's critical that we provide, we, we really prove the concept via a robust evidence-based data set. Um, frankly, the business case has to stack up. Um, so, essentially, the, the savings generate, uh, generated have to beat the investment put in. And, of course, over what time period, um, that's a question we can't answer right now, but it's clearly something we'll be looking at. Um, and, and I think the final thing to say there is that um, you know, SEMS will be configured um, you know, in a very different way in each city, and, and that could be to both existing or new infrastructure, as we'll see. So where did we start? Um, we're now one year into the program in Sharing Cities. Um, the starting point we had was, um, as you can see um, from the slide in front of you, quite a um, high level uh, and ambiguous um, sort of definition across the three cities. Um, we talk, they talked about a SEMS being an integrated energy management system. So it's implementing a system to integrate and optimize energy from all sources in the districts and interface with citywide system, including demand response measures. I'm sure you'll appreciate that. It's quite high level. So our first challenge was to uh, get together in a, in a workshop, and we did this back in May. So this was a cross-city workshop um, where we looked at the infrastructure and unique challenges that each city was facing, um, and we arrived at the following definition. So I'll, I'll briefly read through it, but I, I, I know you can too. Um, so it's an overarching advanced control strategy uh, and data system um, focusing on citywide system integration and optimization. So really what it does is it integrates, and, and this will all become clear, I hope, in a, in a diagram in a moment, but it integrates proprietary devices and system controls. So that could be a building management system, lamp posts, EV chargers, or, or other sources of energy production, um, you know, coming from heat pump or, or PV solar panels. Um, it also receives um, a number of inputs, um, which in this case is coming from the USP, we agreed, which is the urban sharing platform and is part of Work Package 4. Um, and with that, it helps it formulate and implement these optimized control strategies. And finally, it outputs to a system controller and then information, again, via the USP to influence behavior. So this is probably something to come back to um, and look at in a moment. And, and as I say, I think it will become clear with the diagram. Before we just move into a, looking at a city-specific application, um, I just wanted to have a quick closer look at the, one of the central elements of, of our definition, which is that of advanced process control. Um, so really what's, what's driving this thinking and wh why we think this is the, the right way to be testing um, is that advances in computing power and process control theory uh, offer the potential for more effective and efficient system operation. And we think that cities and governments are actually best placed uh, to drive this. So SEMS makes available the possibility of implementing advanced process control across the city, allowing the smart integration of city infrastructure and equipment to achieve the optimized operation and forecast control. We briefly looked at the benefits, but uh, just to, to, to note them again, operational cost savings, reduction in energy consumption, and critically, better utilization of existing city infrastructure and therefore avoided infrastructure investment. Just want to pause here for a moment. This is really just to give an example that, although we'll, we'll focus in depth on a London example, uh, use case in a moment, um, this is just a snapshot of Lisbon. Um, and it really just to give credence that 
each city, um, including all the, the follow and scale up cities, will clearly have very different infrastructure um, and different producing and consuming devices. So, in London, um, you know, one of our key use cases is a, is a heat pump, um, but obviously in Lisbon, um, PV is, is a slightly um, you know more relevant uh, parameter. Um, and with that, there comes very different control problems um, that SEMS will be looking to optimise. So, a closer look. Um, so I'm briefly going to just go through this in a circular way, and, and hopefully it will start to become clear um, sort of what we're looking at. So you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, firstly, this is just an indicative diagram. Um, so th uh, the connectivity protocols here um, you know, will be changing, but this is really just an, an early, early visual. So the water source heat pump you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, this is the, um, the heat source. Um, and if we're running along the bottom, um, we can see a district heat network. Um, we've got heat storage and heat exchanges there. But what I want really to draw your attention to is the buildings uh, now in the bottom right-hand corner. So all we have here really is a heat source providing some buildings um, with their heat. Um, we have a number of um, uh, meters, so that's electricity meters, heat meters, occupancy sensors, temperature sensors, um, that are picked up by smart controllers that will be deployed in the buildings in Greenwich. Um, so these are social housing block buildings. And essentially that data will then go up and be transferred to the urban sharing platform, which you can see is the big square at the top. And you can see in the right-hand side is heat data collection. So one of the key elements of, of, of Just, this design... Uh, Rick. Sure. Sorry for interrupting. Uh, just to say to people who are in this uh, webinar to write their questions already in the chat or put up their hands if they will have questions because you have only five minutes to present the rest of the presentation. So sure. I would like to take their questions. Okay. Thank okay. you. Five minutes. That's great. Thank you. Um, so essentially using the urban sharing platform within this model, um, taking the, the information from the buildings um, it has a, a few benefits. Um, firstly, um, it means we can take in a wide a range of data. So as well as the heat data collection from the buildings, we've got from the weather forecast, and you can see we can, we can also take in energy pricing information. This provides SEMS with a lot of, um, a lot of data um, to, to feed into its predictive control and optimization uh, sort of strategy. Um, Moving to the SEMS element, you can see SEMS there in the top left-hand corner. So essentially, SEMS is deployed in the urban sharing platform by virtue of a specialized piece of code and algorithm. Now, what SEMS does um, is it will take in the information from multiple parameters that we've just said, so weather, cost, and the, the, the demand data from the buildings. Um, and via an algorithm, it uh, allows SEMS to have predictive and optimization capabilities. Um, so it will essentially then advise a control strategy um, to the heat controller, uh, which is the SCADA, um, for the particular processes that it's looking to adjust. So essentially, um, SEMS will be advising the SCADA controller uh, a number of things that could be when the plant should be running, um, uh, according to the electricity market signals, um, or it could be uh, when to use a thermal store. And it also advises the, uh, the, the, the controller which system actuator positions um, that it should use um, to, to, to then operate the heat pump at the bottom. Um, you know, and that's been predicted um, according to the, the optimum process state. So we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, and, and again, I'm sure there'll be a few questions on that at the end. But just we've got a few minutes left, so I'll, I'll just quickly move on to the workstream update. So. Some of the achievements we've had over the last 100 days, um, we've agreed the use cases um, and, and the city-specific applications of SEMS across the three cities. We've started to level the architecture, and we've really got all the stakeholders on board. The next step um, is there's probably two key bits here. The first one is continuing to integrate SEMS and the, the urban sharing platforms, that's Work Package 4, so that actually um, we can create, it's obviously going to look different in each city, um, but it's about working out how we connect these up and, and what data requirements are necessary. Um, similarly, um, we are looking, once again, as I mentioned at the start, you know, about business models and finance. How do we make this design simple, replicable, and attractive to investors? There's been a number of challenges along the way. Um, as you can appreciate, um, you know, a key one is in maintaining alignment. Um, you know, we had different starting points um, and, and some pre-existing procurement commitments that we've had to work around. And we've also come across a few uh, challenges around intellectual property rights and data privacy considerations. All of these I see being useful to share with, with follower cities as, as we catalogue them as we go. 
So really just my final slide, um, you know, what can you take away from this? Uh, I think firstly, um, you know, I appreciate that there'll probably need to be a, a further look at um, sort of SEMS and go back through the presentation to, to have a real look at, at what we're trying to do. But once you've done that, you know, the question I think is, is what are the opportunities to deploy SEMS in, in your cities? Um, so this is really about um, where can you deploy process control, identifying the energy processes that aren't normally controlled in an integrated way by a control strategy, and thinking could an algorithm, a predictive control and optimization algorithm there, really help and optimize that particular process. Um, platform versus no platform. In London, as you saw, we see a lot of benefits of using a cloud platform and deploying SEMS as essentially a piece of code in that platform. Um, but there are a number of other ways, and, and because it's just a piece of code, it can potentially be deployed anywhere. And then the final one was just this identification of this local APC technical expertise. So what we're talking about here is quite a, a technical algorithm um, and, and, and model which really needs to be, uh, it's a mathematical model that needs to be developed by specialists. So in Lisbon, um, that's uh, IST. Um, in, in the UK, we've got Teesside University and Siemens, and in Milan, Siemens Italy are looking at that. So the final thing was really just a bit of a call out to, to, to everyone listening. Um, it's just to emphasize this is quite you know an early process we're still learning and i'm sure you know amongst the fellow cities you might be doing something similar and, and indeed we can probably learn from you so if so you know i'd love to hear from you i think that's probably it bernadette um so perhaps back over to you for for any questions thank you very much rick it was a very good presentation and uh, i think you have brought up many interesting uh, topics uh, might be relevant for I would like to ask people to indicate by uh, putting up their hands if they would like to speak or ask a question. I don't see right now anybody. I might give a minute to it. Okay, so I don't see anybody having uh, questions. Uh, I would like to ask then the cities who are in this uh, webinar to put up their hands so see if the functionality actually works, if they have similar questions or challenges in their cities, if they're working on something similar. The hands that you can put up is next to your names. So we would like just to see who should be we be talking to if we would like to discuss SEMS and potential links with the USB with cities. So it would be very helpful for us to know if you have similar challenges, if you are discussing similar topics, maybe you have similar projects. Okay, so I will wait, and in the meantime, I got a question from Anne de Tour. You can ask your question, Anne. Um, uh, uh, am I online now? Do you hear me? Yes, yes. yes Just okay. introduce yourself, uh, uh, who you yes, are, and, and ask your question. I'm from the European Commission, and I'm working specifically on the data issue, so my question will be, obviously, for the last presentation, what are the main challenges you are facing in terms of data, uh, and could be could you be specific? Is it is it data accessibility? How do you ensure the accessibility and that uh, the formats are compatible between the different uh, data, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? So could you elaborate on the issues both in technical, legal, and regulatory terms that you might face, or maybe there aren't any? So, thank you. Thanks. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think it's um, it, it's fair to say that data has been a, a challenge that we are facing across um, the, the program as a whole, because um, it actually relates very strongly to Work Package 4, which is obviously the platform. Um, and I think some of the areas in brief that we've been uh, that, that we're having wider discussions are, are um, around privacy. So as you'll have seen in that example, um, we're taking data from individual uh, dwellings um, and it's, we're essentially aggregating that and potentially using them in apps. So there's a question around privacy there. Um, that's just one example that I've given. Um, I think 
Um, in terms of the data accessibility, um, again, it's really being addressed on a case-by-case -case basis. So um, there's some bits of data that will feed into the urban sharing platform about electricity prices, which are quite straightforward to get hold of, and similarly with weather. Um, but we... Um, Again, really have to. We're in the process of, of, of trying to um, put together a, um, a sort of data strategy for the project because I think this has um, become, uh, you know, been flagged um, through a number of work packages. And then I think the final thing I want to say, just in relation to, to SEMS, is um, we are. There are obviously a number of potential ways that you could connect um, SEMS and the USP together, a number of protocols and, and, and data devices. So we've got an exercise to really try and standardize that, to try and capture that process so that we can share best practice firstly and also potentially um, bring together procurement practices um, so that we are, you know, as an example, using some of the same meters or, um, you know, using the same protocols. Um, once again, this is really in collaboration with Work Package 4, and, and we're just at the start of that journey. But, um, yeah, so a number of data uh, challenges that we're facing. It'll be interesting to hear if that's, again, something that's replicated, you know, across the European Commission. Thank you. So, thank, you thank you very much. Uh, there is another question. Um, is the development of the U USP also being undertaken by utility companies moving to establish energy brokerage services? What evidence have you seen of competition for city up services from the utility companies, if any? And uh, I don't know who asks the question. It's not really visible in our system, but we can give the right to the person to speak to add more explanation sure. to the question if needed, Rick. Or yeah. can you take it already? Yeah, I think so. I, I think, again, if I've understood correctly, and, and please come back if I haven't. Um, so the in each city the within Work Package 4, there's, again, a consortium of partners, and it's really a mix. So we've got some um, l largely private companies um, working, um, but also with uh, municipalities uh, to, to create this platform. Um, and I think relating specifically to some of the city app services, um, again, I think that there's a bit of a mixture. Um, in London, we have, um, we're working with uh, Danfoss and Kiwi Power as partners in the consortium who will be helping us develop um, uh, some of the apps relating to energy. Um, but I think... Um, Again, with, with scale-up um, really at the heart of this program, um, the idea is that um, behind the platform is that if we can um, you know, generate data and keep it as open as possible, um, we can then stimulate a number of other um, you know, private sector opportunities to come in and, and develop that data. London, as an example, um, we have the London Data Store, um, which is, um, a, uh, again, a sort of open source platform um, which publishes a number of um, publishable data sets in London. And we've seen examples over, over the, the previous years um, of a lot of private sector companies and entrepreneurs um, essentially capitalizing on, on the data uh, and, and creating new apps off the back of it, um, which is really what we're trying to do, stimulate that demand. And, and everything from sharing cities, um, you know, the intention at the moment is to try and ensure that's on London Data Store and, and available to the, to the wider world. So that's the philosophy there, and I, and I hope that's answered the question. So thanks, thanks a lot, Rick. Uh, I will just give the, the chance to the person to uh, ask the question if there is more question and introduce himself or herself. So you have a right to speak, the person who asked the question. Can you please speak? Uh, okay, apparently we can't hear the person, but we ho I hope that we answered the question the person had. And I would like just to thank you, Rick, for mentioning the, the data store, the London data store, because we also had a, a webinar on the data strategy of London, so people actually can listen to it and, and check if they are interested in more details about that. Uh, it's on our website. Uh, and then I see uh, three people putting up their hands, and I would just like to give them a very short time to introduce themselves and uh, say why uh, they have put up their hands, if it's because they have similar questions, then we would just like to hear what is, what is their similar challenge. So apologies if I'm not pronouncing correctly the name. Uh, Dragica Lubitz, uh, you can speak. 
and say where you are from, please. We can't hear you. Uh, you should be able to speak. Drag it a little bit. Um, afraid we can't hear you. So we'll try to take another person with the same question. Ah, okay. The per okay, Dragic just said that uh, there's a problem with the microphone, so we can't help that situation. Uh, but maybe, Dragic, in the meantime, you can write uh, the question or information that you wanted to share. Um, okay. And then uh, let's go to the next person. Okay. But people change their minds. <laughs> okay, so there are no questions, but uh, because they put up their hand and then they take it off. Okay, good. So then that's good news for our time management. So, Rick, uh, we would like to switch to the other topic, uh, smart lampposts. Um, please uh, prepare your presentation. Sure. And in the meantime, I just would like to tell people that actually they can uh, – write their questions by email to me after this webinar or directly address Rick. Absolutely. Great. Well, I think I've got that loaded, Bernadette, so ready when you are. Yes. You Thank you. Well, firstly, apologize to everyone um, that there's no change in voice. You're going to have to listen to me for another, another 15 minutes, um, but uh, hopefully I can make it interesting. So um, the humble lamppost, um, let's have a look. So what we're going to look at today, again, um, you know, apologies for a fairly brief agenda. So this is going to be a bit of a high-level summary. Um, what is a smart lamppost, um, and, and what are the humble lamppost menu of features? Um, I'm unsure of the, the, the level of background knowledge, um, so I think we're going to start from the beginning and just give a bit of an introduction about what that entails. Um, an update from Sharing Cities. Um, so how has the program been moving forward with this? And then finally. Um, a look at the implications for scale and the benefits of a collaborative approach. Um, essentially, the, this Sharing Cities initiative and our approach to this, the humble lamppost, the smart lamppost, um, is really feeding into a much bigger uh, chain of activities across the EU. And whilst I won't be going into that in a lot of detail today, um, I will be encouraging you to, to, to look further into that and see how you can join in and take advantage of some of the opportunities. So. First thing first, um, I think there are a dozen things that you can do with a lamppost that do not involve light. Um, this slide is really just to give uh, an example of the, the huge array of um, a potential that, that you have in, in a lamppost, what is essentially something um, that, that we felt was a, a fairly plain and boring um, piece of city infrastructure. I'm just going to briefly run through. Um, so the first one um, is around lighting services. Um, we have LED luminaire potential um, that can deliver a 50% energy consumption saving. Um, another uh, potential use case uh, is sensors to enable dynamic trimming and dimming. Um, so uh, that could be further reduction of energy use, um, for example, with, with weather-related fluctuations. Um, so. We've looked at just the light there. Um, there's obviously huge cost of savings that, that, that come from switching to LED. But really what is smart about this is the additional smart services that a lamppost can have. Um, and what do we mean by that? Well, a few examples. Um, public Wi-Fi is one. Um, so that's using an array of lampposts to provide connectivity, um, which might be applicable particularly in, in the built-up city center. Um, parking services, um, lampposts can have sensors and cameras to monitor free spaces to advise those who are searching for them um, and perhaps to ensure charging compliance. Uh, environmental monitoring, um, so uh, essentially sensors um, that, that could be looking at anything from air quality to water levels to noise. Um, we've got uh, public safety um, use cases, so this is around um, buttons push to talk um, or potentially housing CCTV, CCTV cameras. Um, PV can be installed in a lamppost um, to supplement and, and, and power the LEDs. 
And then I think I just wanted to talk um, about these this three further ones that not only um, have smart capabilities, but that also have um, potential um, sort of revenue stream opportunities, um, which again could be attractive to, um, uh, to, to a, a city municipality um, and to anyone looking to enhance that business case. So one example is through digital signage. That could be the provision of dynamic signs for, for public services or potentially charging out for, for advertising uh, and taking a proportion of that advertising revenue. Um, Geofencing is another example. Um, so monitoring the location of pedestrians for safety purposes. Um, that could be in a, in a crowd situation. Or once again, potentially for local retail um, via an intermediary um, so that they can provide offers for those people, um, tourists. Uh, it could be an example that choose to receive them. And then the final one um, is um, electric vehicle charging, um, which again is another potential revenue opportunity um, there. So it, there's, um, you know, Test and use cases that provide distributed slow and fast charge points for bikes and cars um, that could be distributed across the city. So, basically, in a nutshell, as you can see there, there's a lot, a lot going on on a lamppost that we perhaps didn't uh, didn't, didn't realise before. So, looking at sharing cities. Um, what we've done is we've take, taken the concept and, and all the features of the Humble Lamppost and um, come up with some common use cases for smart lamppost features which address certain needs of a city um, or provide a city with additional services. And these really can be divided into light-based use cases and the non-light-based use cases. Now, um, although th that we have got a, a common set that we've just been through, they're clearly not going to be applicable um, to every sharing cities, uh, city. So what we've done, the approach we've taken, is each city's taken um, uh, the use cases and, and, and use cases and features which which apply uh, to them. Really, sort of menu um, we have here, and just about choosing those that that that, um, that are most attractive, and that will depend on the priorities of each city, um, which could be contextual, um, political, or, or otherwise. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but um, briefly I'll run through what each city has been focusing on um, to provide a bit of context. Um, in Lisbon, um, there's been a priority of controlling vehicle movement and traffic flow, um, and, and also linking this with, um, with environmental monitoring, so looking at air quality levels to inform traffic controllers um, who might want to sense the emission levels in the district and, and control traffic flows based on this, uh, and that could be extending red light timings to reduce traffic um, you know, and address stop-start conditions. Um, Milan um, are actually incredibly um, sort of far ahead in this. They've just completed a city-wide LED replacement program, so we, we've seen the LED side of things. So the focus now is just what they can add on. And they've actually also got a focus on connecting different districts together. So they've built a, a mesh network of, of LoRa um, for, for, for two purposes, really. One is to provide free Wi-Fi to citizens, and the second one is to have a network to plug in additional non-light use cases, like the environmental monitoring. Um, and with that, they're looking at, at water levels and flooding. Um, Greenwich, again, has taken a sort of different approach um, based on their priorities um, and um, one is it, there's a real big uh, uh, political push for air quality uh, control in London. Um, so it, there's an idea to to, um, to to include this in some of the lampposts to, to be able to monitor this. Um, and then there's a second one around, uh, a second focus area is transport and, and mobility and, and, and some of the smart parking we looked at earlier on. So from a uh, sharing cities point of view, you know, some of the next steps really are um, put in place some of the, the, the symbol smart lampposts in the demonstrator areas and really just pilot the sensors, continue to detail the use cases and um, really begin to capture the data requirements um, so that we can start connecting these, uh, these lampposts into the urban sharing platform which we saw on the last presentation. Um, and all the while we'll be developing more insight on the density of sensors and features, so building experience on optimal placement um, to inform all cities' plans and, and business cases. So that's enough really about the um, about about what the Hamble lamppost can do, and I think we've understood its value at a city level in, in helping to deliver a municipality's priorities. So for the last sort of um, four or five minutes, I just want to focus on um, what we can do together, uh, and really looking at firstly the size of the EU-wide opportunity, um, secondly the challenges that cities face, and thirdly you know how you can potentially get involved in um, in some of the initiatives that are, that are going on at the moment. We'll quickly pause and look at the um, the opportunity slide. I think 
the, a lot of these figures speak for themselves, um, but we've got um, an estimated 60 to 90 million um, streetlights across Europe, um, potentially more than that, and 75% of them are over 25 years old. Um, and then really I think the, the, the stats below that are just really talking through the benefits that we've talked about. So, um, you know, again, that's sort of 50% plus uh, saving just through LED alone. And then we also see the other environmental ben benefits, including um, greenhouse gases. And, and, and obviously the, the, the cost implications are huge as well. But I guess what we're looking at now is... Um, so we've seen the challenge, um, you know, it really of, of a fragmented approach. Um, you know, it comes down to, to lost economies of scale. Um, I think for uh, there's problems, problems for cities um, in that they lack in-city volumes to bring sufficient demand to the market um, to achieve these potential economies of scale. Potentially, there's a lack of available budget to make the large-scale change to outer street lighting, um, and, and also there's um, you know potentially lack the, the confidence and capabilities to make the initial investment case. For, for industry, the industry side as well, it's not just the demand side, the supply side, there's challenges as well, um, particularly large multinationals. Um, I think for a while they've been bringing convincing arguments to cities, but these promises are, are too often not trusted, um, resulting in slow uh, you know, action and, and a bit of frustration. And similarly for the SMEs serving this segment, um, they're often under intense pressure, uh, margin pressure, so they struggle to invest in the necessary R&D and survive. So. What we've been looking at, I just wanted to introduce now the, um, you know, the European uh, Innovation Partnership for, for Smart Cities and Communities. And they've been looking really to try and um, solve this um, by bringing together a small group of pathfinders that can demonstrate a different model, and one which is all about collaboration. So that's around a, a common logical design, which we've just looked at, and, and some of the smart features, but critically one that can buy at scale and to a common standard. Um, and they've been doing this in, in a number of ways. Um, on the demand side, um, they've been, uh, there's been a formulation of city clusters to aggregate demand for these economies of scale. So we've seen sharing cities is one of these clusters whereby um, the, the commitments in the, in the bid um, to the, the testing areas are obviously very, very small volumes. So there's been an exercise to try and actually generate interest in, in the whole of those cities um, and also reach out to the, the follower cities and other SSC01 programs. Um, and then a second city cluster is um, really trying to identify uh, pockets of activity uh, across the EU, one of which is London, um, to once again bring together all the disparate boroughs and decision makers to um, really you know, procure um, together and, and buy into this concept together and, and, and generate um, you know, easily double-digit savings. On the supply side, um, the EIP have been, been active again, um, you know, formulating the cross-functional industry ecosystems to, to service this demand. Um, it's just quickly worth pointing out um, the, the, the benefit of a standardized specification. Um, and this is something that really gives confidence in the product that's being bought that's, that's international and actually looks to system performance. And once again, there's, there's a number of initiatives they've done to, to bring together you know, a, a sort of core supply side that, that can give that confidence. Um, as I say, I'm, I'm mindful. I've just got a couple more moments now, but it, it's, it's well worth finding out more about the um, about this work and, um, and and potentially joining in discussions. As clearly, there's been the savings to be had and a multiple other benefits. Um, one is, you know, including information on the, um, the the European Investment Bank Technical Assistance Grant. Um, you know, essentially a seed fund support um, for cities who are, who are ready to, to start committing to this. Um, to find out more about this, um, uh, I will. Oops, just at the end here, you can, you can see I've got um, Graham Colclough's um, email um, there at the end. Um, and um, I understand that some further information will be, will be put up um, if, if you're interested in joining those discussions. So I think just finishing there, I just wanted to, um, before we open up for questions, um, a few sort of thoughts to put back to you. Um, you know, what are your city's priorities? Um, how may these influence which use cases you would want to explore with the smart lamppost? And, and how can you get involved in the scale-up initiatives? Uh, I'm very mindful that there's a lot of activity in Europe, and in many ways London is, is learning from that. But, you know, I'd be interested to hear, um, you know, a, a, some of the sort of opinions and perspectives of, of those on the call. So I think, Bernadette, that's, um, that's it really. And back to you. Thank you, Rick. Uh, would you mind just to leave the, your slide on? with the questions. Yeah, of you. course I can. Yep. First, I will ask people if they have questions to you about your presentation. Same, uh, please write in the chat or put up your hand. 
Okay, I give time to people to think about their questions. It's a very brief and uh, at the same time very detailed presentation, I assume. We had a very funny comment actually. Uh, somebody wrote that they didn't know that you can do so many things with a single lamppost. So yeah, I think it's quite impressive for many people still to see what can be done. Um, so I have a question from Michael Van Hover or Michael. Um, do you have any experience with actual application on these smart lampposts? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, personally, me, um, I'm obviously um, just a part of the, the Sharing Cities program, so I'm working on the, the testing um, sort of element within the, um, the, the Greenwich district. Um, but absolutely, um, as I indicated before, there are um, a lot of uh, examples where this has already been rolled out. So um, I use the Milan example. Um, the, almost the whole city has already done the LED rollout and is seeing the benefits of, of the upgrade you know, purely, purely from the savings generated there. Um, similarly, across London, um, there is 34 boroughs in London, and there's a um, a number of boroughs of, have either um, done the LED rollouts now and, and are looking at the smart, um, or they're starting to take the decision to um, do the whole lot in one go. Um, so absolutely, um, I think with LED, um, that's fairly mature um, in terms of the rollout and the benefits. Um, with the smart, um, there are certainly pockets of activity um, that, where, where, where that's been demonstrated, and, and I would encourage um, you to, to contact Graham, who can put you in, in touch with further examples. But um, yes, I think the reason the opportunity is so large is that there's still a number who haven't quite understood the, the value that the extra smart elements can bring, So, and, and, and really the, the, the return on investment that can provide. So limited on smarts, but certainly with the LED, there is, there is evidence. So Michael Van Hove, do you have any uh, questions uh, to add? Oh, it was sufficient. Uh, you are unmuted, so you can speak. <coughs> ah, thanks. Yeah, I was uh, typing. No, it's it's very interesting. Here in Antwerp, we are uh, more and more moving towards ideas for for smart cities, um, and and yeah, for the moment, we're still looking at opportunities and writing. Uh, vision notes on on how to move forward with with where, yeah which kind of opportunities and 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 so on. So we're basically forming a general idea still, but uh, it's quite interesting. And I, I, I'd love to get in uh, contact with some people who have already more experience, so we can yeah we can have a more detailed uh, uh, vision on that. Thanks a lot. Uh, are there any more questions? Uh, okay, so I think for, for Antwerp and, and for the other cities also, we would like just to highlight the fact that we have uh, opened on uh, the website of the project, sharingsofcities.eu. You can find a knowledge platform, so you can register there already. It's not yet filled with content, but we are going to put everything there, and you are able to say which measure you want to follow more particularly, so you can also invite your colleagues to subscribe to it, and that way you will receive uh, notifications if something is happening that is relevant for you. So it will make, I think, uh, easier uh, your life to follow the different uh, cities' developments on the areas. And as I said, we are going to organize many activities in the second and third year of the program. Uh, I see another question. Uh, no, sorry. There's an answer to the question from Anthony. Um, we can ask him to say what he wrote in the chat. Anthony, the floor can, is yours. Can you hear me, yeah? Yes. Okay, so um, there are demonstration humble lampposts um, in existence. And that's both types, the full solution that Rick was showing with all the different sensing elements, and retrofit, which is where you add features to um, if you've already done LED rollout. And those exist in Germany, Australia, and uh, America. But um, I understand a demonstrator is being planned for Greenwich. So uh, we should have some news on that um, shortly. And 
uh, just to introduce you, so Anthony is working. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Urban Danny, you want to say something more about yourself, maybe? Uh, I, I'm one of Graham Coating's partners at Urban DNA, um, and um, uh, we are working on the part on the, the data as well. So some of those comments earlier are very interesting for us. Yes, so Anthony is also working in the program uh, and on these matters. Um, so if you don't have uh, more questions, then I would like to thank to, for everybody to attend this uh, webinar. I would also like to inform all of you, uh, if you're interested in, in following us, is that uh, on the website we just published um, a preparatory webinar which we had with the city of Milan, because we are going to have our next e-learning visit in, in Milan end of this month. And uh, we had uh, a preparatory webinar with the fellow cities on uh, mobility and building retrofit matters of Milan. And we are going to organize also a public webinar, so you will get a chance to ask your questions and to get more insights into the peer learning visit of Milan. But you can already have a look at it and share with your colleagues uh, who are working on those areas. Uh, we will send the link and the presentations and everything at the end of this uh, webinar to you, I mean, by the end of today. And uh, yes, we are looking forward to receiving your, your comments, feedback, and uh, questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for attending this webinar.